The following video is a Dennis the Menace production. Dennis the Menace, this name will never stick. On this episode of Is That Gonna Be On The Exam, we look at the analysis stage of the system development life cycle. All right, the analysis stage. This stage includes investigating the current system, determining requirements made by the organization, investigating solutions and what would be the best one, and finally choosing the most appropriate solution to move on to the next stage. So all of these are included in the one single analysis stage. And as I mentioned in my previous video, many people disagreed on what was and what wasn't a total stage, and that's why there was no true answer to how many stages there were in the system development life cycle. And the reason being is there's so many different things involved in this single stage. You can see many people might break it down to separate things, and some people might even add on more into this one stage. But all these are important for our analysis stage that we're going to be studying. All right, so who is involved? Um, the client or the individual missioning the project and all end users, and end users in this case would be the individuals that be, will be implementing and using the system, must be taken into account at this time. So the client needs to be happy with the final product and it needs to be end user friendly so that they're able to use it properly and easily. So that's something important to look at. All right, another important thing for the analysis stage are setting project goals. So project goals are the intended job of the system and its scope, aka limitations, and these all must be considered. Um, the entire analysis stage, especially project goals, is important because if there are not strong project goals that are met, the system cannot hope to succeed. So when making these project goals, you need to make sure that they're very specific to your one client or end group of end users and that you meet them wholeheartedly and fully. That way you don't have to ever go back and say, oh, we missed one project goal because then the entire system will be not what the client was wanting and you might either have to make a new one or just go under major renovations in your old one. So make sure that you meet all of your project goals. All right, so first is data, uh, or another thing is data collection. Um, information must be gathered from users through many formats, including questionnaires, face-to-face -face interviews, and or observation. So each of these forms of data collection, in order to find out uh, what project goals are needed to be made, they each have their limitations. For example, questionnaires, end users might answer the questionnaire based on how they think they should answer, not based on how they want to answer. So they might answer certain questions based on if they think it might endanger their job or not. So that's kind of important to look at. Face-to-face -face interviews will and well, both face-to-face -face interviews and observation will take large amounts of time and people to question everyone in an op in a organization. So you may have to either then take all that time and resources or you might have to scale back how many people you interview and, or observe and that might mean you don't get to observe everyone in the building. So every, all three of them have their limitations. All right, there's also requirement specifications. Um, these are, it's a technical document which describes the needs of the organization. So after you go through and do your data collection, you make the requirement specifications document. Um, the requirement specification document can include functional requirements, which are features the system should have, which includes input, output, storage, all the usual. And then the non-functional requirements, which are limitations on how the system should work. So they're both important and um, they both need to be present in the requirements specifications document. All right, so we're going to look at identification of solutions. After the previous steps have been made, you're finally going to be able to identify several um, solutions to your single problem. And now it's also the stage that um, each undergoes um, a feasibility study. So what that means is each uh, solution that you've come up with, you're going to test it and see how feasible it would work. Is it cost effective? Is it easy to use for the end users? Does the client like it? That way it'll help you narrow down which solution you're going to choose. All right, now we have to look at project plans. So this begins with choosing a project management uh, manager. The project manager is in charge of making sure that the project goes smoothly and that um, all of the uh, time requirements are met, such as deadlines and everything, and make sure that all of the project goals are met. So time management can be held through the use of charts such as Gantt and PERT. Um, so with these different charts, you're able to 
make sh make sure that you're on schedule and you're meeting all of your project goals at specific times to make sure that it all, all works together. So it's really important for project plans, which is the final state, final step of the analysis stage. So that is the first stage of the SDLC. And these are the sources I use to gather information for this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thank you very much for watching another Dennis the Menace production video. Dennis the Menace Productions, I can't believe that name stuck.